just a few hours after the official skills were revealed for Herman Prime he was already implemented into the rock battle simulator so I started doing some pre-release test results and guys Herman is performing a little bit rough if I'm being honest with you so today we're gonna go over dozens of pre-release battle reports so that way you guys have an idea as to how Herman Prime might perform when he comes into rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers okay so let's talk about how Herman Prime is actually implemented into the rock battle simulator okay first of all the creator of the rock battle simulator his name is Speco he did implement the current version of the skills that includes two stacks of poison instead of the originally released three I've heard that that was just a typo in the Chinese servers and it was always intended to be two so it's not like it was a nerf I have no idea and honestly it doesn't really matter and before we go any further there's going to be a link at the top of the description if you guys want to get the rock battle simulator for yourself and go ahead and support speco I am not affiliated with them in any way it's just a very useful tool that we've been using for months now on the channel now the other thing we have to talk about as to how this is actually implemented into the game is the expertise skill now one of the things that people had questions about is that if you go over the 25 stacks right because you can possibly get multiple stacks in a single turn which could push you from 24 up to let's say 26 or 30 if you're doing the aoe right some people wondered like okay does it just subtract 25 stacks cast your active skill and then you start like let's say if it's 30 stacks of poison on the target does it subtract 25 and then you start at five on the next turn cast the active skill and you're up to seven right away I do not think that that's how it's going to work and that is also not how it was coded into the simulator the way that it is currently coded in the simulator is that if you have on a given turn at the start of the turn 25 or more stacks it will reset them to zero cast your active skill and then give you however many stacks you would normally get so in the case of the simulator we're just doing a 1v1 so you get two stacks right after that so you basically start over at two okay which is exactly how i think this is going to work in the game there's nothing in the actual skill description that says remove 25 total set like that's not how it works okay it's just counting up to 25 once you hit 25 it resets that's how i think it's going to work that's how it's coded in the in the simulator so i think that the way that he is currently coded in the sim is probably pretty accurate now let me just take this moment to remind you guys that the rock battle simulator from our experience is only about at best maybe 90 percent accurate so it is a very helpful tool for testing out a bunch of different things but it's not perfect and especially with commanders that aren't even in the game yet the developer of the simulator can only implement that commander to the best of their ability as to how they will expect him to work in the game and historically speco has been very good at what he does and so i do trust that he is implementing these commanders as good as he possibly can and as always you should definitely be waiting to see some actual real game in-game testing results before you make a decision to invest in a commander and you know what's funny every time that I have a disclaimer about the rock battle simulator in these videos I still get like probably a dozen people in the comment section below with like a 30 IQ who are like oh actually on the arc these are uh, just simulation results and uh, you should just test him in game for real brother he's not out yet you clicked you clicked on a video about test results before he's out you knew you knew that it was going to be pre-release results it would be impossible to have real results because he's not in the game yet so if anybody in the comment section below is complaining that the pre-release results are pre-release results i'm just going to link you to this portion of the video and call you a silly goose okay and by silly goose i mean you're an idiot okay joking aside let's go over the parameters for the test and i go over this pretty much every time we use the simulator but this is very important so that way you guys know what i am testing for when we are doing this now this is a screenshot the only thing that i've actually changed from the screenshot that is inaccurate is the troop capacity i actually tested with 210,000 troop capacity for everything in the video so just keep that in mind but you can see here that on both sides i gave them a 10 percent health rune five percent skill damage uh city skin the only exception was for infantry i changed their civilization to france and gave them 15 percent health that's just because liu che was involved so obviously skill damage isn't going to be valuable there both sides have a 10 percent defense rune and both sides have three purple pieces now I tried to pick the purple pieces that were most likely to be used by free to play low spenders things like that so they do vary depending on the troop type and therefore the iconic stats vary slightly but I just wanted to make it as realistic as possible and yes we did include the ring of doom and horn of, horn of fury both of those do add RNG to the test results but that RNG is required to get an accurate result because everybody uses both of these things in the open field right so you have to add that RNG into it in order to get an accurate result 
out of all of this uh also you could see the uh, talent trees that we use on both sides vip 17 to 18 and 40 percent all damage on both sides because we are in kvk that's what you get for being on the map okay so the first pairing that i tested was herman prime primary with Zhuge Liang secondary and i already showed you the talent build before but i will reveal it once again just so you are aware you can see the troop capacity i did change that to make it more accurate and we went up against nevsky joan now if you guys are familiar with these test videos you know that nevsky joan is extremely good in the open field but typically isn't very good in 1v1 scenarios however the first test results here her, this is basically an even trade okay they have virtually identical sev wounds it's off by three literally it's off by three sev wounds okay technically the the herman one here moving on to the second test result you will see that the herman Zhuge Liang actually loses with fifty thousand remaining for the nevsky jones so the rng was definitely in the favor of the herman Zhuge Liang on the first result there you go you know that's the case 50k remaining for the nevsky Joan. the third result 23 and a half k remaining for the herman Zhuge Liang. the fourth result 26k remaining for the Nevsky Joan and the final result result was basically even again so out of the five reports that we did two of them basically they broke even they traded even okay one to one ratio then we have one report with Nevsky Joan winning in the 20ks we have one report with Herman Julia Leong winning in the 20ks and then one report where the Nevsky Joan just blows them out of the water so this is I mean look Cavalry does counter archers okay so that that's one thing but this is not this is not off to a great start start okay it was really not off to a great start to be honest with you guys i would argue that the nevsky joan here because of that 50k report now this could be rng but i think that they they're the winners next we did the same pairing up against cpo liuche and you can see over here that i did change it to france and we put a, a little you know obviously different equipment this is the talent build that i used for cpo because i think that people do like to grab the extra march speed and things like that over here plus you have i think this is emergency protection down in the corner so i think this is a relatively common build for cpo prime and here you can see that the herman julia leong does win with forty four thousand remaining we have 19k sevs to 27.7k moving on to the next result we could see eighty three thousand remaining for the herman julia leong with basically double the sev wounds for the losing side over here which is uh unfortunate for the cpo next we have 70k remaining with with, again about double the two to one sev wound uh ratio moving on to the next report we have 55k remaining and this one still in the favor of herman julia leong and finally we have 22k remaining so you can see here lots of rng present with the herman julia leong combination very unfortunate but they do win every single time against cpo with liu che so this is basically the single best infantry army and herman julia leong will destroy that army but definitely not as powerful as you would expect i think you know if you guys are familiar with these test results Boudica with Julia Leong would have blown this out of the water with like 100k remaining like it, it's crazy so the test results you know again Herman Julia Leong does win every time but it's not the blowout that you would kind of expect it's it's good it's definitely good don't get me wrong it's definitely good but it's not like insane next we went back to Nevsky Joan and we swapped the Herman Prime to the secondary slot with Julia Leong primary and you could see here that is the talent build that I'm using for the Julia Leong and this is you know I just wanted to test to see if maybe Maybe the skill tree would be a little bit more effective and unfortunately it seems like that's not the case now we're going to go through obviously more of these test results so you can get a, a better feel for it but it seems like herman prime is probably going to be primary commander material that seems to be the case so here you can see nevsky joan wins with 19k remaining moving on to the second report you could see nevsky joan wins again 35k remaining moving on to the third report nevsky joan wins again 22k remaining moving on to the fourth report nevsky joan barely wins this is basically a tie to be honest with you guys and final result we could see that the juge leong herman does actually pull out a w with 20k remaining so remember uh the nevsky joan was slightly better with the herman prime primary in this case i feel like the nevsky joan definitely out outperformed i mean it won four out of the five one of them was basically break even so it won three out of the five i think uh herman prime primary seems like it will probably perform better let's move on to the next test next we went up against cpo liuche once again with juge leong primary this time same talent build that i just showed you from before and you could see that the CPO Liuche loses again with 60k remaining on the Archer side. Second test, we have 50k remaining for the Herman Prime side as well. Moving on to the next test, we have 73k remaining. It's like a two to one sev wound uh, ratio here, which is pretty good for the Archers. Moving on to the next result, we have uh, 57k remaining. And finally, 
we have 65k remaining so i would say it performed pretty similar to what we saw before with the herman prime as the primary and i think the upper limit was a little bit higher for the other one in terms of units remaining so very similar results here but what we can say is that obviously the archers win every single time and you would expect that because it's going up against a troop type that accounted next i wanted to test herman with tamiris because this was another pair that a lot of people were saying was going to be really good and this this is not oh. so okay herman tomi loses 75k remaining for the nevsky joan kind of insane moving on to the next report 60k remaining for nevsky joan moving on 63k remaining for nevsky joan uh almost two to one trades here in in the seven department moving on same thing 60k remaining and finally almost 80k remaining two to one seven ratio the herman tomi lost every single time with massive amount of troops remaining for the nevsky joan and that was really kind of devastating okay i'm gonna talk a little bit more later as to why i think this pair is not performing very well but yeah this was this was not looking good and remember nevsky joan isn't really a great dueling army so the fact that like still losing here kind of a big yikes okay kind of a big yikes and before you comment uh this does include the museum relic buff from tamiris okay it does include that bonus health so yeah this is not looking great in case you were wondering this is the talent build that we are still using for the uh herman prime next we did the same thing the herman prime tomi up against cpo liuche this time and you could see still france civilization and you could see that the herman tomi lost okay now archers counter infantry and this is a double aoe pairing so like this isn't even built for dueling okay and herman tomi lost 28k remaining for the infantry uh kind of looking rough here moving on to the next result herman tomi loses again 29k remaining for the infantry moving on to the next result 17k remaining for the infantry <sighs> guys 43k remaining for the cpo liuche and finally 40k remaining for cpo liuche this is this is the bad ending guys this is this is the the dream of herman tomi is being shattered before our very eyes because this is now look the herman is not meant for dueling okay let me just be very clear it's aoe poison that's the that's the draw for him but you know the fact that the trades are that bad like how bad of a trade are you going to accept in exchange for the aoe poison debuffs that's something that you have to consider to put this into perspective if you had like a Boudicca prime with Juge Leong up against this this would be blown out of the water it would be like a three to one trade two to one trades at least right so this is a really bad result I I this is really bad now, just out of curiosity I did the Herman Tomi against the Boudicca Juge Leong just because I wanted to see how that would go totally destroyed okay 87k remaining for the Boudicca Juge Leong you could see the talent build down here moving on to the next report 81k remaining next report we have 97k remaining next report we have 87k remaining and finally 86k remaining so herman tomi absolutely ob obliterated basically next i put tomi on the bench i replaced it with julia leong to see how it would how it would perform and uh, you can see 18k remaining for the Boudicca julia leong so Boudicca julia leong still beat the herman julia leong okay for the first report but you can see that the difference is way lower okay so the tomi was definitely the problem uh with this pairing and if we move forward a little bit next report 38k remaining next report is uh actually a win for the herman julia leong which is very impressive because Boudicca julia leong is very good at dueling especially from every test that we've seen with the simulator it always performs well moving on to the next result we see herman wins again with 3k remaining it's about it's about an even trade okay uh and then finally 34k almost 35k remaining for Boudicca so by putting to Myris on the bench we get a significant improvement out of Herman Prime so Herman Prime and Juge Leong looks like that could be the way to go and for my last result here I just wanted to do Herman Tomi against Guan CPO okay a lot of people are still using Guan CPO and I wanted to see if we could at least beat that because it's kind of like the second best infantry march that you could do if you don't have Liu Che okay we see about you know 20 29k remaining for the Herman which is good he gets the W there we get 31k remaining for the Herman that's good gets another W 31k re remaining again another win we have 12k remaining another win and 62k remaining uh another win so five and oh Herman Tomi does beat the Guan CPO okay so that is good news the CPO Liu Che dominates Herman Tomi kind of embarrassing to be honest with you guys but uh at least Herman Tomi can defeat the Guan CPO okay so let's talk about the conclusions from this pre-release information that we have this is I only did five uh, battle reports for each test okay just so I can get like a wide variety of things for this video but what we can conclude 
conclude is that the Herman Prime is pretty underwhelming. It's he's not dominating everything. A lot of times when we see like with Huo, he came out, he was good. When Julia Leon came out, he was amazing. Okay. He basically killed everything. So with Herman Prime, we're seeing the results aren't insane. Okay. They're not, they're pretty lukewarm and, and dare I say, they're kind of bad to be honest with you. That being said, dueling is not a 100% accurate representation of how good a commander is going to be in the open field and i know that that sounds like copium but like i said earlier nevsky joan is not good at dueling typically it loses a lot in the simulator and yet it still gets insane results in the open field i've been using uh with nevsky joan in my kvk it's still one of the best open field pairings probably top three in the entire game right now so like just because something loses a lot in the simulator doesn't mean that it's a bad pairing and that could be what we're seeing here with herman prime now again the other thing is not only are duels not a great representation of how the commander could be performing in the open field but also herman prime is built for aoe damage right like he's actually made for that because his debuff is also aoe right like he even has a skill exclusively for aoe skill damage bonus plus 20 percent so his value is going to be in the aoe department always okay and the fact that it's a half circle aoe is going to be amazing and i really think that this you know herman prime is going to be one of those things where i think it was aristotle that said the whole is greater than the sum of its parts right and i think that that's probably the best way to explain what i suspect will be the case for herman prime in that he will probably perform really well in open field murder balls but when you look at his kit and when you look at the 1v1 duels he just falls really really short so my prediction is that he looks like he's probably going to be pretty squishy and he looks like you know if he's if it's not a really dense crazy murder ball you may want to use Boudicca Prime with Yuge Leong. That, that might be the better route here. But if you are going into a murder ball with tons of targets to hit and tons of people to spread poison to, that's, I think, where Herman Prime is going to shine. Now, the other conclusion that we can talk about is what's on the screen right here, Tamiris. Now, why was the Tamiris pairing failing so miserably? Well, I did take a look at, and you can watch the test as it's running. And so I did start filming this, and you can see here, this is where the stacks are being counted uh for the expertise okay and you see the get removed and then boom it launches his active skill right after that um and so here we're counting basically both of these skills are counting the total number of stacks of poison the expertise is counting how many stacks of poison have been accumulated since the last time it popped and there you go so i'm just gonna pause it right here okay you can see right now there are six stacks of poison and the rage meter for herman is nearly complete on the following turn he gets seven stacks then he casts his active skill we're up to 10 we go up to 11 and Tamiris casts her active skill. Now remember, she removes the poison stacks. And this is one of the things that I noticed. And it, I mean, this is actually pretty generous earlier. Like even here earlier in the battle, it's only at 11 by the time Tamiris casts. Okay. And I spent a good amount of time just watching the Tamiris reports. And the thing with Herman Prime is that he has rejuvenate from the support tree. So he actually has a really good rage engine and the longer the battle goes on typically the faster your rage cycle is going to be and a lot of times Tamiris's active skill was popping when she had seven stacks eight stacks right like you can really pop the active skills quickly and so the problem that I can see from these pre-release results is that the Tamiris active skill is dealing like 13 or 1400 damage factor which in 2023 like we have Huo who's dealing 2700 he's dealing like double the damage of Tamiris okay which is wild but not only that Tamiris is removing the poison stacks which means that you know the target no longer has the poison debuff but also remember that with Mandrake Root Herman takes 15 percent less damage from any target right and that's assuming that the target has max stacks okay so in the reports where we have Herman Prime primary Zhuge Liang secondary once they get to the 15 stacks which takes longer because there's no tamiris but once they get there they sit there forever they always take 15 percent more skill damage and you always as herman prime take 15 percent less all damage which is very important taking 15 percent less all damage is huge but tamiris keeps removing them when you get to seven eight eleven stacks you basically never besides like the first skill cycle you pretty much never get a full 15 stack clear from Tamiris because of how quick the rage cycle is going once you get going with the Herman Prime primary. So removing the poison stacks is probably doing more harm than good. You're now taking more damage because of Mandrake Root is being reset. And the consequence of that is that you're dealing a 13 or 1400 damage factor that's 
horrible it's pathetic right it's nothing it's not good and then you've reset the stack so that way by the time herman prime launches his active skill the chances are that the target is not back up to the 15 stacks of poison so they're not going to take the 45 percent increased skill damage from the active skill on herman prime so what we can find out here is that yes herman with tommy will pop herman's active skill more often because of herman prime's expertise but the consequence of that is that you're just removing the poison sack so quickly with that rage cycle that i think it's doing more harm than good and you're still the extra casts of the active skill you know they're not at their highest power because the target doesn't have the max stacks of the poison anyway so i don't know guys i i'm starting to think less of the tamira's pairing after looking at these early results um again we have to see how it performs in game that is like the most important part about all this but it seems like the tomi pairing is uh much better on paper than it will perform in the actual game now it's also worth noting that tomi does have march speed on her relic which obviously that value is not shown accurately in the in the simulator because march speed is something that you only experience when when moving around the field but i think tomi is just a little too outdated her damage factor is really low and i mean i don't know guys it's uh we'll have to wait and see it could be the case that the simulator is just completely inaccurate for judging how good tomi is that's like 100 that could be the case and you know obviously like i said wait for the in-game results for now though it looks like herman prime should probably be the primary commander and also juge leong is probably his best option for secondary i mean they both have a skill damage bonus this is juge leong is for all skill damage but for herman prime he has aoe skill damage bonus which for both these commanders they both do aoe so that's fine now the other thing i want to know is this three target damage factor here on the fourth skill from juge leong it says this is not affected by skill damage buffs but the buff on herman prime is not a skill damage buff it's an aoe damage buff so could it buff this possibly right i mean it's the only thing in the game that buffs aoe damage so you know could that be a loophole here to to make this an even more powerful thing i have no idea I, I don't know like there's no way to know until it comes into the game but yeah that is the early test results for herman prime so far looking quite underwhelming but definitely not a fully accurate representation of how he may perform when he's actually in the game so definitely stay tuned for actual results in rise of kingdoms i would love to hear what you guys are starting to think about herman prime in the comments section below if you guys missed everything that herman prime is doing we covered all of his skills previously on the channel so go ahead and check out some of my recent videos and if you made it to the end of this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on i will talk to you guys again soon peace